What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours, we do have very big topics to discuss. Firstly, new manager search, of course, continues as we do here now that Deco and Laporta's favorite is Luis Enrique, but PSG are not going to let him go by any means necessary this summer, and according to reports right now, Roberto De Zerbi is the favorite to become the new manager this summer. We also have some updates on the German school as well, Tuchel, Flick, and Nagelsmann. Uh, signings this summer, of course, the main objective at the beginning of June will be, of course, the future of the two Joao's. And Jorge Mendes was in Barcelona last night to discuss the two Joao's uh, future, so to speak, and the decision has been made in regards to both. We'll give you guys the updates on that. Contract renewal updates as well. Pau Cobarsi, Hector Fort, and Marguayu have been offered new deals at Barcelona and again the club do want to tie them down to brand new improved contracts as soon as possible and finally we do have some injury updates in regards to Frankie de Jong and Pedri with big alarm bells and huge concerns around the Spanish midfielder before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes in this video be very much appreciated and also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 48 hours. Now, we're first going to be discussing a quick update in regards to Cavicia Cavaschelia's potential move to Barcelona this summer. His father, who is also his agent, has been speaking in the media and he was asked on his son's future, of course, being linked with Barcelona as well. And he said that, in my opinion, he will decide to stay at Napoli next season. Only he will be able to choose whether to stay at Naples in the future and I will respect his every decision so no father power here he's not going to try and persuade him he personally thinks that for now Kevishkelia will stay at Napoli but of course in the transfer market in the Mercado you just never know again he's one of the favorite options at the moment to be coming in to reinforce that left wing position I personally think he's a good player but I don't think for the quoted price of around 70 to 80 probably reaching around 100 million euros including variables is worth it i think Rafael liao is better and also you can probably get him for a bit cheaper than that as well but we'll wait and see again still fairly early days all we know that the club do like him and he is you know a name that the club are following for that left wing department no clear priority no pursuing the transfer quite yet but again that'll probably come around April or May time ish once we get our transfer targets you know well settled and of course the new manager has to come in as well so we'll see how things turn out with Kavashkelia but again his father and his agent is keeping the door open for his future but still lean towards staying in Naples. Now one of the main objectives for Barcelona before the summer transfer window is to figure out slash sort out the future of the two Joao's. Now their agent Jorge Mendes was in Barcelona yesterday he apparently had lunch was Juan Laporta. Again, no video proof of that. There was uh, some video of him coming out of a restaurant in the evening and he was saying that he was having dinner with friends and it's none of your business what happens inside the restaurant stays inside the restaurant. Nonetheless, though, Jordan Mero has come out with an update following Jorge Mendes's, you know, trip to Barcelona. He's come out saying the sensation is that Barcelona want to pay a transfer fee to keep Joao Cancelo. Whilst for Joao Felix, they will try to attempt, they will attempt for a second loan. If they cannot get him through a second loan, then Barcelona Barcelona aren't willing to proceed any further. What I have doubts about is whether he, Mendes, traveled into town to also recommend a name for the new manager position as well. So the manager position, that's by itself. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. But we have to talk about the two Joao's. Again, with Cancelo, very, very clear. The club want to keep him under any means necessary and are willing to pay transfer money for him around 20 million euros, give or take maybe a couple million lower or higher. With Joao Felix though, they're now, I would say, on par with what everyone is thinking. Second loan, sure, why not? Maybe include a buy option in there just to keep Athletic Madrid happy. Of course, no buy obligation. That would be, com that'd be complete suicide. Buy option, fine. If they can't get the buy option, they will walk away. That is going to be very, very interesting because if Joao Felix does return to Atletico Madrid, what are Atletico Madrid going to do? They don't want him in the team. Diego Simeone doesn't want him. Joao Felix does not want to be Atletico Madrid. They'll, of course, try and sell him, maybe loan him out somewhere. But if you're going to loan him out, why not just loan him back out to Barcelona? He's already been there for a season. He wants to move. The club wants to move. It'll all be no in synchronization so to speak it's very very interesting but i'm just very very happy with the fact the club are keeping very firm second loan 
or nothing. I don't think Felix has done enough to warrant us spending any money on him whatsoever. Still hasn't reached that bare minimum of double digits in both goals and assists. Will he or not come into the season? That still remains to be in question. I think no matter what he does now from now until the end of the season, we should remain firm on this aspect unless he carries us to a ucl trophy and nothing gonna change the joel fix scenario and of course with joel cancelo as well it will stay the same so again the plan is clear sign cancelo permanently no matter what negotiate with man city transfer fee whatever the case may be but for joel Felix, it'll either be a second loan or we won't see him as a blog runner next season let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the b team at Barcelona, we do have an update on the renewal of Pau Kubarsi, Hector Fort, and also Mark Guiu. Now, firstly, on Kubarsi coming in from Mundo Portivo, they've come out saying that Barcelona have initiated discussions with Kubarsi to adjust his contract following his performances. The club aims to align his contract with his newfound status, showing confidence in his potential. Following this report, Tony Juan Marti has come out saying that Barcelona have already sent renewal offers to Kubarsi and even Hector Fort and Mark Guiyu as the club do see the three players as strong contenders for the first team in the next few seasons to come. Of course, this is the correct decision. I also wouldn't rule out a loan for Hector Ford or Mark Guiyu come that summer as well. I think them renewing is important. We talked about the Fermin uh, Lopez formula in the last video where you see the talent there, let them out on loan, see them how they do in that experience playing week in, week out, then bring them back in more matured, more nurtured. We'll cut it again in minutes at Barcelona. will be somewhat difficult unless we have an absolute injury crisis which of course where Hector Ford was introduced this season alongside Kubarsi as well. Mark Guiyu kind of came in uh well we had we had a little bit of low numbers in the attacking line not really due to injury well, was low numbers and injuries kind of you know combining into one but again very very happy the club are trying to renew these players uh, as soon as possible again this is another concern they don't want you don't need come the Janu uh, not January come the summer transfer window get these easy renewals out of the way again these are kids and players that love the club no matter what they've been bred up from the club as well it's very very easy to renew them at this point of course Pau Kubarsi had a lot of interest from Man City last summer so if you're Man City now he of course reject them now this summer with him now being well established in the first team so we can see how these renewals uh, turn out but again, the renewal offers have been sent to Guayu Fort and Kubarsi, and it's now down to final negotiation, and of course, accepting or decline the renewal offer. Let's now discuss some of the injury updates around the first team at Barcelona. We do have four big injury updates. Firstly, the first two, which are not so good, is in regards to, of course, Frankie de Jong and Pedri's injuries at this MMS this past Sunday. Of course, the news came out uh, a few days ago. I didn't make a shorts video on it. Hopefully, you guys tuned into that. If not, make sure you follow the shorts page where I do try to, you know, provide very, very quick updates as they come out. But the club did confirm that Frankie de Jong has a right ankle sprain and that Pedri has a right quadricep injury and that their recovery will determine their availability. But of course, the timelines have been leaked in the media. In regards to Frankie de Jong, Tony Juan Marti is reporting that Frankie de Jong will be out for around four to five weeks. It is too early to exactly predict his return, but he could be back on the 14th of April against Cadez. So we're looking at post-international break for Frankie de Jong, which honestly isn't too bad. I would say that's kind of exactly what I expected when he did go down with that injury. Initially, he's going to miss the Wanda as Atlantico Madrid match. He will miss, of course, Napoli next week, but he will be back for the Classico and the potential, hopefully, quarterfinals of the Champions League, which is the most important thing in my opinion. So Frankie De Jong, expect the timeline. Hopefully, he does not come back during the international break. I don't want him coming back just before then and then, you know, flying out with Netherlands and playing big games for them. I'd rather him fully rest for the next month or so then come back refresh post international break with Pedri same timeline as well just a bit longer having been get from AES came out saying that Pedri will be out for around five to six weeks and his participation in the Classico on April 21st is in serious doubt now with Frankie de Jong again everyone's kind of agreed four to five weeks I've seen some people say four to six weeks so after international break we will have Frankie with Pedri the reports have been all over the place. Relievo have come out saying that considering that he already suffered the same injury in August and last year and returned in November, the precedent is that Pedri may be off the pitch for around 9 to 10 weeks, which pretty much means the rest of the season. They have been reports as well coming in from sports saying that with Pedri, it is recommended that he take it very calmly and that some doctors even advise him to undergo surgery. It is a new quadricep injury and it's a concern for the club. He had seven muscle injuries since playing for Barcelona. So now the alarm bells are ringing that, okay, this man's had the same injury about eight times so far, three times this season. We can't just have him come back and things like that and then just have this injury all over then again. But of course, it does come down 
to the Euros being this summer. Now, Dr. Ripoli, who's, I think, operated on a few Barcelona players beforehand, very knowledgeable, he came out asking about whether Pedri should undergo surgery or not. And he said that at this moment, Pedri wants to play in the Euros European Championship. And for that, we cannot even raise the option of an operation room. He may legitimately think about reaching the Euros... Uh, he may legitimately think about reaching the Euros, but it seems that it's not realistic. It is the best to operate. So the recommended thing to, you know, stop these injuries is again to operate. He's done the conservative treatment now twice this season, back in October and also in end of December, beginning of January as well. You're thinking, bloody hell, what the hell is going on here at this point? There has to be serious questions about that. But with the Euros being the summer, an operation or surgery is very unlikely. Most likely he will go with the conservative treatment again. Can the serve come out saying that a surgery for Pedri is not contemplated because an injury in the rectus firmus muscle is not surgical. His tendon is not affected, which requires surgery. He will have conversation he will have conservative treatment and the recovery will be in Barcelona. He will not be forced by any means necessary, but approximately he's about to be returning in around one to one and a half months. So the best thing for Pedri is maybe the surgery, but again, with the Euros being this summer and Barcelona potentially needing him, maybe for a title push or a Champions League miraculous run, and him, the player himself personally, not really too keen on the surgery, it is very unlikely. It does scream a lot to me about Ansu Fati and maybe even Samuel Umtiti vibes of 2018. Now, finally, speaking on Sa Ansu Fati and Samuel Umtiti, Javi Mingel has come out speaking about Pedri's injury. Now, Javi Mingel, of course, in regards to injuries, He's one of the top dogs out there. He has been attacked quite a lot recently by Barcelona in the media. That for him and his Chavi relationship, stuff like that. But regards to injuries, he is the top dog. He's come out saying that Pedri's new muscle injury has shattered all prevention and preparation protocols. Right now, no one can say when he will return. The medical staff will now have the medical staff will now have to start from scratch. In Pedri's case, he does not want to be operated on, unlike Samuel Umtiti and Ansu Fati, who aggravated their injuries because of their uh, scriptural trauma, with Pedri, the operation room is not being contemplated. Right now, all scenarios are being contemplated regarding Pedri's future, even a possible sale this summer. Don't mean to flex here, but I have been calling for this since December. Not calling for a Pedri sale. Look, I do not think the club will sell Pedri under any means necessary he is one of the faces of the club i think alongside probably gavi and him they're the faces of barcelona right now there is no way on god's green earth that barcelona will sell him but i did say you either have to sell him or he needs a renewal do not give him a salary increase by any means necessary i'd honestly offer him the exact same contract maybe even under lesser demands we're seeing Pedri potter twice a week for a whole season. This man comes in. Oh, Pedri Montada has one really good game out for two months. Comes back off the bench, just warming up, starts the next game. Pedri Potter's back, magical, out for two months. The problem is, it's consistent. This is not a one off. It's happened three times just this season alone. Serious questions need to be asked. That's why I said to put him on the market, test the waters. But you have to look at it from the Barcelona point of view. I'm speaking as a fan where I don't really consider all the conditions. From the Barcelona point of view, from the board, he's one of the faces of the club. If you put him on the market and he finds out, that will absolutely shatter his confidence. And also maybe even fall out of love with the club. He has been grown up as a Barcelona fan. I think his father was a... Um, what do you call it when you have those uh, Barcelona fan groups? It's slipping the top of my mind. But his father ran a Barcelona fan group in the Canary Islands. So again, he grew up as a Barcelona fan. But... If I'm, you know, I'm here, you know, making Barcelona videos every single day, week in, week out for years now. And if Barcelona tweet out, Barca boy is shit. That's going to hurt my feelings. I'm not going to fall out of love for the club personally. I'll still support them week in, week out. But that will, you know, break my heart. The same thing for Pedri as well. If he's seen being put on the market and Barcelona, you know, open to selling him, he's no longer untouchable. That will break him quite a bit. So that's why the club had to think about that as well. I'm speaking from the neutral slash fan point of view where I'm not considering every avenue. But we'll wait and see. I think... I said back in January, he gets one more injury this season, he's toasted, and he's gotten it. So, I mean, it's not even like a, it was like a crunching tackle or something like that, fine. The man attempted a pass and pulled his quad. I mean, like, his quads are made out of string cheese for crying out loud. We'll wait and see how things turn out. I think it depends when he comes back this season. If he's coming back around mid-April, then we'll probably survive until the Euros, and we'll see from there. If he's not back by the end of the season, then, and he's fully fit for the Euros, I'll be very, very disappointed. I would have said, why not just get the operation? But we'll wait and see how things turn out. But with regards to those two, you know, not so good injury news. We do have some positive injury news. 
for some people. Firstly, on Fran Torres versus Rosalero came out saying that Fran Torres will be the next player to return. He is said to be testing himself in the group stage session this week and will play a few minutes against Mallorca on Friday before the match against Napoli. Also, Marcus Alonso is awaiting his return as well. Rosalero from Motivo came out saying that Marcus Alonso is in the final stretch of his recovery and he's expected to join the group training session very soon. In regards to Alonso, Honestly, with, you know, Kunde playing at right back a lot, you might see Cancelo move to right back, maybe Alonso come in. I think Alonso will definitely get some minutes uh, from now to the end of the season, but not really a, a player I'm excited to return, so to speak. Now, also on Ferran Torres, kind of serve come out saying the final decision will be made in the next training session, but as of right now, the plan for Mar But as of right now, the plan for Ferran Torres will return... But as of right now, the plan is that Ferran Torres will return against Napoli and not Mallorca. His recovery from the injury is still going very good. So some reports saying that, you know what, he's probably going to be on the squad list for Napoli. Maybe come off the bench last 10 minutes, that's it. We're kind of hoping that he does that this Friday against Mallorca. That way he's a bit more fresh for the Napoli game. But we'll wait and see. Since he's kind of close, they might rush it a little bit. Hopefully nothing too serious in regards to a relapse will happen. But definitely in the next week, Ferran Torres will return. I would say in the next week and a half, two weeks, Marcos Alonso will will return now finally not an injury update but a big eye opener of something that we have to be worried about and it is about Lamen Yamal now sport are reporting that Lamen Yamal has some discomfort in his knees and Barcelona does not want to take any type of risk with Lamen Yamal and are treating his discomfort with maximum caution have Mingel then you know kind of shut down that report saying that look Lamen Yamal is fine there is no injury concerns about him whatsoever again having Mingel is the top dog in regards to a fitness news but the fact there's even murmurs of Lamen Yamal being injured, shut down shop. I, I won the Napoli game. I honestly, you know, in quarterfinals of Champions League, it would be great, but we have to protect this player. We've seen now Pedri go down. We've seen Gavi go down. We've seen Ansu Fati go down, all due to excessive minutes at a very, very young age. You can even put Alejandro Balde in that category as well. So we gotta be very careful with Lamen Yamal. This is a very, very important talent. I would say probably the biggest talent I've seen come out of La Masia since the Ansu Fati hype, which of course Ansu Fati led up to a little bit and then it fell down. Gavi hype has been unreal as well. Of course, Pedri isn't from the academy and Baldi, of course, has been very, very strong at fullback. So we'll wait and see with Lamen Yamal. Again, nothing confirmed by the club. This is just coming in from sport, but then it having Miguel came out shutting that down immediately. But, you know, keep your eyes out on potential niggling injuries with Lamen Yamal. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 48 hours. Firstly, in regards to Jules Koundé, who is set to be rested this Friday against Mallorca. Tony Juan Martins come out saying that Jules Koundé could be rested against Mallorca on Friday, thinking about all the important matches against Napoli next week and also to come as well against Atletico Madrid. He has played the entirety of all 15 matches so far this year, accumulating a total of 1,380 out of the possible 1,380 minutes. If Jules Koundé is rested against Mallorca on Friday, Hector Fourth could have a chance. He and also Cancelo could play on any flank. Inigo Martinez will replace uh, Ronald Arujo, who is suspended. I have been crying out for Jules Kunde to get some rest. He's played every single second of every single game this year. Don't forget about the Barbastro game, Unio Yistas game as well, and the round of uh, 32 and round 16 of the Copa del Rey. This man has been there in every single moment, every single blade of grass this season, whether he's played well or not is besides from the point he has been that consistent this season also Frankie de Jong was on the same track as well but of course he got injured in the last game so he probably would have been in that same bracket as well but you have to take care of Jules Kunde. again he did already get, uh, did get injured this season for about a month in October November as well you want to be very very cautious with him he's on a good run of form I would say against Getafe against Napoli had two really really good games against Bilbao everyone was mid let's let's not beat around the bush about that but a player that we have to take care of and again another player where we can't really suffer any more injuries in that position so hopefully Chavi does give him a much needed rest against Mallorca and also hopefully get to see Hector Fort play at right back in his natural position see how he does there might even see Catello go to right back and uh, Hector Fort go to left back a lot of options that Chavi does have whilst you know everyone's fit but if Kunde goes down we got more issues on our hand and we need to prevent that as soon as possible so hopefully Jules Kunde will be rested this Friday against Mallorca. Now, along with Jules Koundé, another Barcelona player who has been playing so many minutes, not just this year in 2024, but the entirety of this season has become an integral part of the squad, is of course Ilkay Gunduan. Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo has come out saying that Ilkay Gunduan is an invaluable player for Xavi and Barcelona, both on 
and off the pitch. He has participated in all of the 39 matches so far this season, playing 3,108 of a total of 3,570 minutes and directly contributing to 15 goals in total. He has adapted to different roles in the midfield, doing whatever he was asked of him, either in the pivot, uh, the, uh, the eight, and sometimes even the 10. He also contributed his experience to his dressing room full of youngsters from the dressing room. They said that Gunda one's humble, not a star, uh, not, you know, a star, so to speak, and is a team player because of his attitude and he's very essential. His professionalism and humility is greatly valued at the club dare I say it dare I say it of course Mbappe SI who you know hasn't made the move yet good new one might be the best free signing we've seen in the last 10 years I'm struggling to think who's a free a free agent transfer that's done the likes of what Gunu has done at Barcelona this season and I'm just thinking imagine he was at City this season City might be you know a few points clear at the top of the Premier League I mean good one has been nothing short of absolutely sensational this season the consistency that he's brought in and you know like the report says playing in different roles you know one minute he's playing the pivot the eight the six playing in a four-man midfield he's been absolutely all over the place at a consistent level and someone that you can really rely on at the age that he's currently playing at you know playing week in week out for barcelona is no mean feat a player who should be rested this friday against mallorca as well we cannot take any risk with him whatsoever he's just so so important and our only quality midfielder that is fit at the moment. So we got to be very, very cautious with him. But again, Barcelona is super duper happy with what Gunnar is providing for the pitch this season. And again, Xavi delight with his uh, German signing as well. And a player that we have to be very, very careful with for the rest of the season in regards to, of course, fitness and injuries. Now, one of the biggest stories around Barcelona over the past 48 hours has been the launch of Barcelona's new television program called Barca One. Now the news initially broke from Ferran Corras in Sport. He came out saying that Barcelona will soon have their own OTT platform. The name of the application will be Barca One and the club calls it the new Barcelona Netflix. The idea is that the application will be much more modern, groundbreaking and revolutionary to the old Barca TV which had cost of course 14 million euros per year to run it but only had an income of 2 million euros per year. All the news of the club will be offered in that matches, training sessions, press conferences etc as well as their own content such as reports interviews documentaries and the club's athletes some of the former Barca tv employees are now being hired again by the club and they've already been working on the new television program for weeks now again this is going to be very very important i am struggling to watch these damn press conferences on these random live streams from mundo portivo and esport 3 and marca it's been all over the place in regards to matches i think that more highlights the fact of Preseason games, maybe some friendlies as well. I don't think they're going to be televising, you know, La Liga, Copa del Rey, Champions League. If they do, then bloody hell, they can have my money right here, right now. I can cancel all my other subscriptions at this point. But I don't think that's going to be the reality. Of course, other other uh, television uh, channels do have the rights for that. Now, following this report, I think an hour or two later, the club made it official in full awareness that the future of entertainment will also be culture and audiovisual production. FC Barcelona is proud to announce the launch of Barca One, a new free worldwide OTT service offering top top quality content on the Barcelona theme. The product democrats the club's video material by making it available for free around the planet, something unforeseen until now. They gave us some details as well on the live content and things like that. But again, they have officially launched it and announced it. They announced it as, of course, the Barcelona One channel. And the first, you know, big televised documentary they will have will be on Aruho. The first exclusive content on Barcelona's new OTT platform, Barcelona One, will be the original series on Aruho, a documentary all about the world of Aruho that will be premiered to the media this Wednesday. It's going to be a 40 minute long programming explaining all the roots of Aruho, including his visits to his home country, blah, 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 him in two years at Barca Athletic, all that jazz. Now, keeping in mind as well, the actual launch of the channel is expected to be around the beginning of April. Of course, we're still at the beginning of March right now. They're gonna premiere the uh, documentary so that the media can see it, report on it, things of that nature. But to you know, officially launch this worldwide, we're looking, I think, around April 10th to 14th, according to reports, and sometime around the second, third week of April for the worldwide launch for you know you and I to access this channel. But finally, about damn time, of course, once Barca TV shut down, I think it was last year or the year before, we were waiting for the, you know, the new launch and things like that. Barcelona have a lot, a lot in the media aspects and this will be hopefully give us you know, a little bit of a remontada in that sense but i'm very very excited for it we'll wait and see what the content is if they can get the barcelona matches you know a lot of league and stuff like that they can have my money now on the topic of getting new things of course barcelona are expected to be having a new stadium by 2026 officially but hopefully in november we can move back to the spotify camp now and new images of the espy barca project have been revealed by barcelona and i tell you what these images are absolutely 
astonishing. I get, I'm getting goosebumps just looking at the stadium. I cannot wait to sit my butt right on that C in the FCB logo. Just sit right there and watch us hopefully play good football under what manager? I have no idea. Again, we have images of the new press room as well. It usually is very small and compact. Now you have the windows on the side, way more uh, big as well. The speaker and you have the manager very isolated in the middle. I love the Barcelona glowing badges in the front as well. Also have some images on the outside. So you can see that the top there is the before, the old top now and after as well. Kind of you have the uh, oval finishing off. You have the roof at the top with the television as well. It's going to be so, so gas. This is what it's going to look like from the outside as well. I cannot wait. The fact that this project is underway from this summer and is going to be finished in 2026, you know, completing this in three to four years is wild in my opinion. And again, this is going to be absolutely revolutionary for Barcelona. And I cannot wait to go and put my butt in that new stadium and also going on the stadium tours where the inside of the stadium is absolutely revolutionary the technology the infrastructure is gonna be one of the best we've seen in the world if not the best now along with upgrading the stadium the club are also considering upgrading the sports city the Ciudad Esportiva Juan Gamper where of course all the training sessions and media and everything where the where the players are 24 7 apart from the stadium in the game they're also looking at expanding the ground as well. Frank Corazon Sport came out saying that Barcelona are contemplating the expansion of the Ciudad Esportiva Juan Gamper. It is one of the challenges of the board headed by Juan Laporta. There are currently six professional sections of the club and with good number of teams in each of them and Barcelona want to provide a better service to their athletes. The idea is still very much in the early stages but they are discussing and studying how it can be done. The club owes certain areas land. The club owns certain areas of land where it can happen but they also said the club owns certain areas of land where it can happen, but they can also sell some of their unused land, which has lost value, and use that money to upgrade on what they currently have. So, very, very interesting. I've been only once to the uh, Ciudad Desportiva Juan Gamper. I showed it in my vlog on my channel last year, which I think is almost coming up to a year today. Bloody hell, man. I'm getting, I'm getting old. Nonetheless, though, it is very much compact. It's very much, you know... Uh, a very very good training center. I wouldn't say it's over the top, you know, top quality stuff. If you look at the videos of, you know, the Tottenham Hotspur training ground, the Man City training ground, there are levels above us. But I think Barcelona are not too far off those levels, and they can definitely do that with some upgrades. I would say right now, is it a priority? Probably not. I think I think the most important thing right now is finishing the stadium, get the Blau Balgana uh, uh, done as well. Then maybe do this, this sports city. Maybe we're looking at 2027, 2028. If they want to juggle both at the same time, sure. But I think it's a bit too much on uh, Juan Laporta and also, you know, Eduardo de Romeu and uh, Helena Ford to kind of run the whole operations, make sure everything goes smoothly as possible. But if they think they can do it, then fair enough to them. I think, you know, again, making these upgrades is what will, is what will make Barcelona way more attractive to other uh, products as well in regards to signing players. Players, and of course, signing players, better results, more income, bada bing, bada boom, everyone's happy. So we didn't see how things turn out. Like again, the report still in the early stages, but Juan Laporta is considering upgrading not only the Spy Barca and the stadium of the Camp Nou, but even the Ciudad Esportiva Juan Gamper. Let's now discuss some of the news in regards to the Barcelona managerial search. Of course, this has become a regular theme in the transfer videos for the past month or so now. Every single video, I gotta give you guys the updates on the new manager coming in. And we had a lot of shakeup recently. There's there's been the name of Luis Enrique being pushed heavily in the media. First, the Candacera came out saying that Deco's favorite coach to replace Xavi is Luis Enrique. And even reliable sources around the Barcelona board is saying that Deco dreams of hiring Luis Enrique to replace Xavi. And Joan Laporta has approved his signing as well. He is the current favorite. I don't know where this has come about. A lot of people think that PSG are going to sack Luis Enrique. And with them now qualifying last night to the quarterfinals of the Champions League, I really don't see PSG sacking him in by any means necessary. They're gonna win league, uh, they're gonna, you know, make it to the last eight of the Champions League, which isn't, you know, too bad on paper for his first season as well, losing Kylian Mbappe. I don't know, man. I don't even think Luis Enrique wants to walk. Now, following all these reports, L'Equipe in France have come out saying that Luis Enrique has no desire to return to Barcelona despite the interest from Deco. So they have confirmed the interest is there. And again, Luis Enrique, he's done. Man man managers who say, who do well at a club rarely come back because they don't want to ruin their reputation. Again, this is why Pep rejected us twice since leaving. It, 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 if I'm a Barcelona manager and I've won, you know, a treble and I've won the double and I've, you know, won numerous amount of titles, why would I come back and risk that reputation that, you know, fans hold of me? I consider Luis Enrique 
what a, one of the gods of Barcelona's managerial position, of course, and he's on that Mount Rushmore. But if he comes back in two seasons and win absolutely nothing, will that hinder his reputation? Unfortunately, it will, and I don't think he wants to risk that, honestly. And honestly, you know, he, he has a, there's a reason why that he left and that he wasn't sacked. So, I mean, we'll wait and see, but I don't really see it as likely. But apparently, according to Marca, who again, Luis Rojo is really honing in on the Zerbi being the favorite for the manager position. Again, Luis Rojo has come out saying that Roberto Zerbi remains the best placed coach to replace Xavi at the Barcelona bench. Brighton want to keep the Zerbi. The contest for a renewal begin in November. However, no agreement has been reached. The coach is aware of Barcelona's interest and is in no hurry to renew his contract right now. With Brighton, the Zerbi has aspirations to make a leap to a bigger club in the future. The main reason for Brighton waiting to extend the Zerbi's contract is to raise his release clause. At the moment, it is a fix according to various sources at around 10 million euros. And Brighton want to double the amount in order to now facilitate the coach's departure this summer. So again, it's very, very weird. We're hearing a lot of, oh, Deco wants and uh, Luis Enrique, but the Zerbi is the favorite. That's kind of the theme that's going around right now again with the Zerbi in my opinion I just think he's way too inexperienced to come into this Barcelona team right now if you were if we were in you know the Kike Setien vibe or maybe the Chabi when he first came in or maybe even Komen then fine but we've now evolved since those times I think I, I don't think the Zerbi is a step backwards by any means necessary I just don't think he's the right coach to take this team to the next level I think he'll need at least a year of adaptation and then who does he bring in then how do we play and what are the objectives going to be set for him it's as a manager, I think we just need, we're at a moment right now where we just need more experience, in my opinion. And that's why the German school is still picking up a lot of speed. AES have come out saying that Luis Enrique is Deco's favorite option to manage Barcelona, and Joel Laporte agrees. He's the dream option for the club. However, the manager has a contract with PSG until 2025, and the club cannot afford to pay his release clause. Deco is responsible for bringing the proposal to the table, but Barcelona's big decision are still taken by the president Laporta. Neither Xavi nor Deco can, can definitely uh, rule out the manager's continuity at the club, but neither of them want to stay either. Joel Laporta really likes the German school of managers, Julian Nagelsmann, Hansi Flick, and even Thomas too cool. So in the end, Deco will decide who the manager is, and of course, Laporta will back him and pretty much sign off unless he's, you know, picking an outrageous manager, so to speak. But I don't know. I still, I'm still betting on a German manager being the Barcelona manager come the summer. I think Hansi Flick is still in a very good position because Laporta backs him. Deco is, you know, all right with him. I think if Deserby didn't have a release clause, I would consider him definitely the front runner. But paying. For De Zerbi is where the big question mark comes in, which I don't think Barcelona will contemplate. I mean, we're already broke enough to reinforce the squad. Why spend, you know, 10%, maybe even 15% of your transfer budget on a new manager? Where, you know, he could have a terrible form once and then you end up sacking him, you know? It's it's a very, very risky job where Hadi Flick is free. He's, you know, he has a good reputation, although, you know, there's some pros and cons for him for sure. He's free. So we'll wait and see how things turn out in that regard. And so we do have some updates on the current Barcelona manager and Xavi Hernandez, of course. And again, the board not too happy about that performance at the San Mames. Roger Leda from Unibotivo has come out saying that the Barcelona board also believe that the team had a lack of ambition in the match against Athletic Club on Sunday. They don't understand why the players did not play with more intensity, knowing that the win would help them in their position in La Liga. Athletic Club also had numerous important players out and were playing three days after an important cup tie. They admit that the team could be affected by injuries to De Jong and Pedri, but even so, they lacked more desire to go and find the goal in the game. 100% correct. Uh, there is the argument that, oh, first 15, 20 minutes, we were playing well, we were on top, then once Frankie went down, our heads kind of dropped, then our heads dropped even further when Pedri went down. I get that, but that's still no excuse, in my opinion. Now, in regards to Chavi's position as the Barcelona manager, and then the only way that he does not you know, stay the Barcelona manager come the end of the season is, of course, next week on Tuesday. According to Javi Mingel, Xavi could be sacked by Barcelona if they are knocked out by Napoli. I think I think if Xavi just gets to the quarterfinals, no matter what happens in the quarterfinals or La Liga, he won't get sacked. And the only way, the only situation that will leave the hands of Laporta to force a Xavi sack is if we get knocked out by Napoli next Tuesday. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's hope that Xavi can at least finish off the season and leave on his own note. But if Xavi does not beat... Napoli or Barcelona don't beat Napoli. Serious, serious, serious questions need to be asked about Xavi. But then again, you can make the argument, if you sack Xavi, it's going to be Rafa Marquez to let in the season, and that will not help us in any capacity whatsoever. And also, you're going to just let go of Xavi for nothing and disrespect the legend, and, you know, just drop the grassroots order that you do have in the uh, in the uh, Barca Athletic and the Cadet team and the Juvenile A side. What is the point of that unless you can bring in... If we, if we sack Xavi, then we better bring in the likes of Hansi Flick or someone who's actually, you know, 
touted out to be the current manager, not, you know, Rafa Marquez for the rest of the season. It doesn't make sense whatsoever. So, wait and see how things turn out in that regard. But again, Barcelona's search for a manager continues. Luis Enrique, De Zerbi, the German schools leading the race. And again, Xavi could be sacked if he gets knocked out against Napoli. If he survives Napoli, very, very unlikely he'll get sacked at any point during the rest of the season. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing I want to first see, of course, is your thoughts on that new manager coming in. Who would you select? Would you go for De Zerbi and pay for him, of course, Luis Enrique? Or would you go for one of someone in the German school? Second, your thoughts on the Joao's, your thoughts on Barcelona only going to pursuing a second loan for Joao Felix and of course pursuing a permanent transfer for Joao Cancelo. Third, your thoughts on the renewals of Cobarsi, Gui you and fourth think they will all accept it or not and find your thoughts on the injury concerns around Pedri where do you stand on him give him more trust in time back him or would you maybe consider selling him or maybe renewing his contract on lower demands like I would and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time on the channel take care and force a Barca <laughs>